I'm going to explain elasticity and plasticity from a physics point of view and then show how to apply to structures. So say you have um, some kind of uh, material in a cylindrical shaped form um, that has a force that you subject to it at this cross-sectional area. Um, then if its original length was L, then it would increase by that much. So you could write um, in two terms, you could say that the strain is equal to the change in length over the original length, and stress is the force you subject over that cross-sectional area. Now if you plot these on a graph, then you'll get, for most materials, a linear line, and that simply means that at the start, if you apply no stress, you'll get no elongation of the rod. And the more stress you apply, the more elongation of the rod you'll get. But it also means that um, if you release the stress, then the object will return back along this line to its original position. And um, that is known to be, materials that behave that way are known to be linearly elastic. Um, now, the best example of this is a rubber band, because if you stretch that rubber band, you're subjecting it to a force, and it's increasing its length. But the second you snap back, um, that rubber band returns to its original length. Now, there's some point for all materials where it no longer behaves elastically. Um, and we call that the deformation point, because what happens is, say this is it, at that point, your line begins to level off. And you want to read this such that at this point, you subjected it to a certain stress. But after that, the more stress you give, the greater strain or elongation of the material you're getting after that. And what happens is, say you're into the plasticity point, and then you release the force. Well, it doesn't return along this curve. It returns linearly back to where there's no force. And what this difference is, is literally a change in how long that material is. So think of like a slinky that you've stretched way too often, and at some point um, it's really saggy and long, uh, and it never gets back to its really compressed, springy, uh, original, uh, right off the shelf uh, uh, material behavior. So this is plastic deformation of a material that once you've gone past this point, then you've um, permanently deformed your material. So how does this apply to, um, say, structures? Say you have a bridge um, that undergoes a load because there's pedestrians and cars and a lot of other forces um, constantly um, happening on its top surface. And that's in creating a strain downwards because you're, you have forces downwards and it's going to dip this bridge although this is exaggerated. Um, but at some point, if you have too much force on the bridge, then you're going to start to have plastic deformation, which is bad, because that means that this bridge is no longer going to return to its completely straight um, structure after the load's been taken off. It's going to actually stay dipping. And what keeps happening if you keep going is it keeps flattening and flattening, and then you stop, because that means it's, it's fracture point, where the material um, has no option but to just completely break. Um, obviously for structures this is catastrophic. If you have uh, rooms of a, of, a, um, of a skyscraper and you just have too much on that floor, um, you'll start to notice it dipping. Your, your floor is dipping and then the people under you are going to notice, well hey, my ceiling is dipping. Um, now you might think this is bad, that plasticity is bad because it behaves in this way. But actually that's a really good thing in structures. Because the second you see f permanent deformation, then you know you have to fix the structure. Um, say if a uh, material didn't have plasticity, um, and it just was very brittle, um, then it would just get to some point and it would just fracture here. So think of that bridge, and you don't realize what the breaking point of it is. And cars just go on it day by day, and one day there's just too many cars on it, or there's some kind of monster truck parade, and then out of nowhere it just collapses because it's reached its breaking point. Whereas the good thing about most structures is they're built with materials that have plasticity, like steel, and 
Um, the second they notice that, hey, it's dipping and it's staying, you know, it's staying kind of in this bent position, then they go and they can have time to fix it because it's somewhere here on the on the stress strain curve and it's not at its breaking point yet. So um, the fact that materials behave both elastically and plastically at some point um, allow us as structural engineers to be able to fix a building once it shows that it's reached that point.